This week has seen the Alberta government and Dr. Dina Hinshaw, the Chief Medical Officer of Health for Alberta, admit that basically when they declared that the uh, COVID-19 pandemic was over in late June, that they had made a mistake and their infection numbers, which are over 1,700 today, uh, would bear that out. And so there's been a big change, a lot of political controversy and a big change in policy yesterday announced by Premier Jason Kenney. Well, I'm going to talk to Dr. Paul, uh, Paul Tupper, who's the director of the Cognitive Science Program, Department of Mathematics at Simon Fraser University, but also part of the COVID modeling group because they've modeled the Alberta experience and they had different results back in June than the, Alber the Alberta Health Services did. So welcome to the interview, Paul. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. Look, why don't we uh, describe the, the modeling that you did uh, for Alberta and the conclusions you came to, please? So we have a, a model that we use for BC, but we can make changes to use it for Alberta, in which we study uh, you know, if we have a certain level of vaccination, if a certain number of people have already been infected, if you have a certain age structure in the population, then what's gonna happen, what we can project what's gonna happen in the future. Now it's hard to make predictions because we don't know what people are gonna do and we don't know what policy the government is gonna make. Um, but back in the summer, uh, we plugged in our numbers and we said, okay, what's gonna happen in Alberta if nothing changes? And what we found that, that there was be rapid uh, growth in the number of cases in Alberta and that uh, quickly the hospital capacity would be exceeded. Uh, now, this is different than what um, the Alberta government was planning. So they had, were under the understanding that they would be able to reopen. And they, originally, the plan was to uh, re relax restrictions. Um, and so given that the Delta uh, variant is much more transmissible, and, and we factored that into our calculations, it just seemed that there was, if anything, they needed to introduce more restrictions. Um, and so recently, we've seen that um, Dr. Hinshaw has found, like, admit, admitted that, that that was the case and that they were not ready to reopen at that time. And they, they did cancel that reopening, the, the, the reopening that they were going to do. Now, you've made the point that, that in order uh, to relax restrictions and not and see a, a big increase in Delta variant infections, there has to be a higher level uh, or a high level of vaccination rates in Alberta is, I mean, I think the premier, what he said in early July that it was at 70%, I think he was a little optimistic. The data shows that it actually was lower than that. And that is was just a too low a rate of vaccination. Have I, have I got that right? Yeah, that's that's correct. Yeah, um, we, we, the, the more infectious the variant is, the higher the rate of vaccination we need to reopen safely. Uh, and so the Delta variant is much more infectious than the original variant. And so we're gonna need higher levels of vaccination. We, we can also, I mean, if people are, can also be immune, uh, at least partially through being infected. And so that's another thing, I mean, uh, another thing that I think maybe contributed to the optimism that they had earlier was they thought perhaps that a larger fraction of the population had immunity through infection as well. Um, but it's, it seems that we're still very far away from that as we are in BC. Now, if I understand this correctly, Paul, your group, when it was doing the modeling in early summer, uh, took looked at which assumptions it should use and decided that the UK assumptions that the Alberta government was using were not appropriate. Can you explain why? Sure. So um, we there, there's there's numbers available on um, from both the UK and the US on the relationship between the number of infections you have and the number of hospitalizations. So, I mean, it's really, the number of hospitalizations is really important because we can't, we just can't have a situation where we have no ICU anymore and we have to do triage, like we can't do that. So um, the UK numbers seem to be much more optimistic. It seemed that the number of hospitalizations per infection was much lower. Um, and the US, but the US ones were, you know, similar uh, to, you know, were the ones that we trusted. Um, and the part of the reason for that may be, it's still unclear, um, but part of the reason for that may be that in the UK, they do a lot of testing. So you, rapid tests are quite easily available um, and they're generally, it's easy to get a PCR test. And so that makes infection rates look much, much higher than they are here for the same number of hospitalizations. Um, and so that has been borne out here. Um, we are not seeing um, uh, 
you know, the, the important point is that it's, we do believe that if you are vaccinated, so vaccination, like, um, is, you know, extremely good at preventing serious illness. Um, it's also pretty good at preventing infection. But when we have breakthrough cases, when people uh, who are vaccinated still get infected, we expect that it's much less likely that they will need hospitalization. And so you might think, okay, okay, it's all right, we can have high infection rates as long as they're among the vaccinated. But the problem is in both BC and Alberta, a large chunk of the population is not vaccinated. And so if that's where most of the infections are happening, and that is where most of the infections are happening, then we're gonna see high hospitalization rates. Now, as I understand it, Paul, uh, your group uh, put out a report and you essentially had modeled and predicted the current situation the government finds itself in now where its uh, acute care system, its hospital system is overrun and they're, they're on the verge of, of triage protocols. Uh, there are already surgeries being canceled. Uh, I mean, it is, if the system isn't about, it isn't collapsed already, it's, it seems like it's on the verge. So you modeled that and you, and, and you put it in a report and, and you saw what was coming. I think that's fair to say, yes. And do we know that the government, the Alberta government had access to your report? Um, well, we, we, um, we released the report and met with the Alberta government and that's, um, and shortly thereafter, you know, sort of simultaneously with that, they canceled the reopening that they had. So, uh, so I think, I, I feel that we were heard by them. Okay. What about the timing though? When, when did this happen? Like when did you release the report and meet with it? Um, I don't, I don't know. Uh, this is in August. Yeah, so it wasn't, you said earlier, beginning of the summer, it, it was more in August. I can give, I can email you the timing of these things. Okay, great. But what about the, was there any modeling done uh, prior to, you know, Alberta declaring that it was going to be the best summer ever, and they were moving from pandemic to endemic management? And was there any of that information, that analysis done that was available to Dr. Hinshaw and her group or Alberta Health? Earlier in the summer, not, not, I don't think explicitly by us. Um, so our group maintains forecasts or projections for BC, but uh, Alberta, that was the one time thing. And I think I can tell you the date. Uh, we did that um, August 13th. August 13th, so roughly a month ago, and they only changed course uh, in their policy yesterday. So basically a month after they got your modeling information. Well, they, can't, they, did, they did cancel their plan to reopen further. So that's good. I was happy about that, but it seemed clear that they, do have to, they did have to do more to prevent this from happening and they could have done that ahead of time. Well, Paul, thank you very much. For this. Is there any, any other insights that you can provide uh, from your modeling into the current Alberta crisis? Um, I want to emphasize the importance of vaccination. Like, I think it's, it's really the best tool. It's the best, our best way out of this mess. Um, and uh, yeah, and I think uh, in BC, we still have to see what, where things are going. So right now our, our, our levels are, you know, sort of sputtering along, like we have just enough, but we'll have to see um, in both BC and Alberta, where schools have only just reopened, we're only going to really see the effect of that in a few more days. So I guess in Alberta, where you've got a higher uh, percentage of unvaccinated people, uh, in an earlier interview, you were telling me that you expect the same rate of infection in children that are unvaccinated uh, as you do in adults. Uh, I wouldn't, I don't know, it'll be quite the same. It seems that children are less, are less susceptible a bit to COVID and less likely to transmit it, but they still can, it still happens. And because Delta is much more infectious than the other variant, and we haven't had schools reopened in Canada with Delta, we are going to see something. Yeah. So essentially we're, we're uh, conducting a lab experiment uh, with our school systems. Well, I don't know if I put it that way. I mean, I think there's been many benefits to kids being in school. And I just hope that, um, I mean, the good news is that children are very rarely become very ill with COVID, but, you know, very rarely is not, is not never. Um, so we just have to, we have to see what's going to happen. Well, Paul, thank you very much for your insights. Really appreciate this. Thanks very much, Markham. It was a pleasure.